In the first video, we started remodeling the last remaining filled-in veranda of our house, including removing the old toilet, plumbing for drainage and water, electrical, a small piece of wall below a window, and the old toilet wall. In this video, we'll be removing the old lino that reveals a bit of history, then putting down new tongue and groove hoop pine flooring, which isn't as easy as you would think, with many challenges along the way. Ferry's been in and removed all this demolition material. Um, all that's left now is just to remove these boards at the bottom of the walls because we want to put floorboards that will run right up to the walls because these walls are um, original and they have, a, have some weathering in there which, which we quite like. It, it's a bit of history of the house. Right, we'll start with this part. Oh, yeah. The lino overlapping the timber there, which is pretty rough. Fortunately, the previous renovators did do a rough job, so this lino comes up pretty easy. Basically, just pull it. And what do we have underneath? Oh. We have more lino. And what do we have underneath that? Newspapers. June 13th, 1971. <laughs> awesome. Right. What do we have underneath that? And then, veranda floorboards, they aren't tongue and groove, they've got gaps between them. Original veranda floorboards. Ha! And past this part, we've got the same grey line, eh? So that was obviously put in later. A different coloured veranda from, oh, more newspapers. Right, now under the floor, we also have, we have tongue and groove, tongue and groove boards. So obviously, and these are a lot later than these. So the original veranda would have finished here, and this part was added on later. So I'll just pull this up. It's also underneath there. We may leave that there for all prosperity. This part can go. nailed down there. Just lay it over the top of another piece. <sighs> Seems to be some sort of mud under there. These boards here are 86 and the boards in this part with the mud on top of them are 83. Yeah, interesting. So it looks like the veranda at the front, which is over that way, was the original veranda, and then a bit later on, 
sometime later on I should say, this veranda was built and it was open because it's weathered. The floorboards are weathered and this mud that's under the, <coughs> it's under the line it looks like a, like a levelling compound of some sort. Um, for the lino so it doesn't show the, the, the weathered boards through it and the walls have got distinct weathering on them so obviously this was an open veranda at some point and copped a lot of weather coming in from that direction these boards are dead clean so I suspect this part this corner was added when the whole lot was filled in hmm. interesting bit of history Okay, we've since removed all the lino and leveling compound and newspapers and everything off the floor. So we're down to some rather rough floorboards now. And we've had the asbestos fairies in to remove all those nasty sheets off the roof. So, next job up is to put some new flooring down. But the issue we have is... When we put up a straight edge across to, to the flooring in the bedroom and then measure it, we find that this floor is around 9, nine to 10 millimeters too low. So we put 22 mil boards onto this, run them up to there, it's going to be a 9 or 10 mil step. So we need to pack this flooring up by around 9 mils. So what have we got that's 9 millimeters? Uh, hang on. Uh, leftover sheeting from the walls. Right, we can put this stuff down. Up to this corner. This floor I think is level because it has boards with slots in them. But this floor isn't. This for some reason this starts off with a a step there which gradually gets down to about no step around there so if we put some of this in that's actually going to be too high there seems okay to there we need something thinner oh. that's a three mil board Seems to fill that in just nicely. That's a little high. That's okay to about there. So we can just pack the floors up with that, and if we need to sand it down, we can. On uh, measuring up the bathroom, we realised that we need to be more than 2.6 because we need the about a meter for the shower, 900 for vanity, and then room for a toilet, which comes to around 2.9. So this wall needs to come to here. So these sheets that we're putting down uh, really can't go any further than. There. That's the edge. That's the edge of the wall there. We then put down a whole lot of those scrap sheets of MDF that would have only gone to the tip anyway. Placing them at 90 degrees to the direction of the new floorboards so it doesn't matter that there are gaps between them and so we don't have to cut them up and fit them together. The sheets are a bit bowed from leaning on a wall at some point, so we hold them down with a few brad nails. We start with running the sheets along the walls 
so the ends of the new floorboards will be on something solid. Then work our way into the middle, making sure there aren't too big a gaps between the sheets because we don't want the new floorboards to feel springy at all. We then get into those parts that need to be brought down a bit with the big belt sander. This of course makes a bit of a mess, which is easily cleaned up with the industrial vacuum cleaner, and is necessary to check the levels of the floor. For the middle, we found an electric planer removes material a lot faster. This of course creates a whole lot more mess too. That is a lot more difficult to clean up because it's fine shavings, not dust. Right, we just got a little off-cart of board here to run up against that floor just to see how she runs up. And once it's down properly, a little crap off the other floor. That lines up beautifully. Good job. Right, now that we've got all this leveled up, even sanded the ends of these boards that they bit the back of this floor here and taking some lumps and whatever off this floor. So we're ready to do some floorboards now. So the best place to start is always the longest board. So we'll start here. <coughs> Dust. Oh. And work out <coughs> work our way across. Alright, start with we just gotta measure this up. Right, just cut the first board. We'll have the tongue outwards. Because we're secret nailing, so we nail into the tongue. Just using a red nailer. If it'll work. It does help if the air compressor is turned on and there's enough air pressure. Then when the next board goes on, you won't see any nails. As we go, we need to tap the board firmly against the previous board to keep the gap between them to a minimum. We stand on the board with our left foot to keep it in place. I'm cutting these boards as I go out of lengths that are around the 4 meter mark. Right, we got past halfway. That's two, four, six, seven boards. Um, and we've come across this doorway. Which leads onto the front veranda, which at the moment has been used for storage for a whole lot of cardboard boxes. The floorboards fit into a purpose-made groove in the hardwood step. We've got up to board number 12, but 13 needs to be shaped into that corner, requiring a bit of accurate woodwork. Right, we've got up to this doorway now, and um, we're going to have to cut around this, make that a little bit longer, and butt it up against these bedroom floorboards, which aren't all that even. So the plan is I'll butt them up as hard as I can and then later on just cut a groove between the boards sort of part way down and insert another piece of timber in there just to make a nice join. Right, we've got up to here now it's close to the end there but the problem is We've run out of this timber that's 140 wide by 22 millimeters thick. I do have some other left over from another part of the house. 
which is 133 wide by 19 thick has a smaller tongue so what I've done is I've taken the uh, rebate plane and run it along the bottom there to get the groove to fit but also to bring up this board so it'll fit in flush but we end up with a three mil gap underneath I have used this in another room and it didn't really show up you don't really notice the drop in height there so that'll have to do I've got another three boards on in the narrower size and this was going to be the last board but we've rearranged the layout of the kitchen oh bathroom sorry and um we've decided to bring this room up to here because the bathroom will then have the shower and toilet on the back wall vanity on the side wall doorway in the middle cupboard over to one side so it'll all fit nicely into 2.6 meters so we've got another three boards to go to get to that end wall which means we'll need some more MDF sheeting as a packer right now throw in some more MDF down there right up to the edge of that wall so the pine boards can go all the way up to there then the wall will sit on top of that right we're done yeah it's all done beautiful <laughs> yeah that's the end of this video in the next video, we'll be framing the ceiling, trying something new that looks nice, but isn't that easy to do.